Well, good morning. I could say good morning again, because this is uh, 10 minutes after I after I did uh, Monday morning. Uh, it's Tuesday. Tuesday, May 15th? Or no, May 16th, no. <laughs> May 16th. And uh, we were recording, because I have Winkle. I'm hosting the Winkle up at... Um, uh, Faith and Harshaw this morning, and so I'm I'm actually already up in Faith by now, or at least headed there yeah, by this time. Um, so I can't be here with you live. So we're recording this morning on this Tuesday, May sixteenth. Greetings to you and God's blessings. I I can't uh, greet each of you individually this morning because I can't see you. Um, although you may see me pop in in the comments and say hello once I'm not driving. Um, so good morning. Glad you're here with us to spend a little time in God's Word. Whether you're here on Facebook with us right now, commenting and saying hi with the community here, or uh, uh, just watching in the background, I'm glad you're here with us to spend a little time in God's Word. For those watching later today or those watching on YouTube after 11 o'clock, uh, Good morning and hello. Glad you're here with us. And, uh, you know, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, join our little group on Facebook or like and subscribe and hit the little bell on YouTube so that you you get the notifications when we uh, when we're here, when the new videos come up. So good morning. Glad you're here with us to do this thing today. I uh, don't know what the weather's like this morning, but I the forecast for Monday says it's supposed to be pretty nice, a little warmer. Uh, let's hope that's let's hope that's what it is. Um, Monday looks like a beautiful day. I it's still Monday for me, and I don't know what I'm going to do yet today. So um, anyway, why don't we get into this? Since I don't know what Tuesday holds for me. Uh, if you have the Lutheran Service Book, page two hundred and ninety-five, daily prayer for individuals and families. That's where we begin with our liturgy each morning here on Daily Devotions with Pastor Sutton. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm 85, verses 1 through 7. Psalm 85, 1 through 7. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Restore us again, O God, of our salvation, and put away your indignation toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob and forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin. You know, King David is writing this psalm, uh, praising God for his uh, righteousness and for his mercy. Um, and I, I, I kind of think, I, I, you know, again, I don't look stuff up necessarily before we start. Um, but I wonder if King David wasn't, well, no, it can't be that because that's after King David. I was going to say restoration from Babylon, but that, that wouldn't be it. Maybe it's the, maybe it's the, the, um, the people were in, um, Jacob, Jacob and his people were in um, the land of Cana, and then they they went to Egypt for 450 years and came back uh, to the promised land, the land promised to um, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I bet that's what it is. Um, 
But the Lord, the Lord, um, in, 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 and David says, restore us again, O God, of our salvation, and put away your indignation toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? And no, God's anger against his people isn't forever. Um, his wrath is always against sin, um, which sin is, sin is not simply um, being bad, but it is being turned away from God and not seeking his forgiveness, not seeking um, the grace that he's given to us through Christ Jesus. And so, so when we are doing that, his wrath is turned away. His judgment is no longer against us. And rather we have what does endure forever, right? His wrath does not endure forever, but his chesed, his steadfast love endures forever. And so here we ended with, show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation, which he has in, through, and by his Son, our Lord, Christ Jesus. All right, let's go on to our reading today. Our reading is from Luke chapter 16, verses 1 through 18. Um, oh, interesting. Well, let's see how this goes. Luke 16, verse 1. He also said to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his possessions. And he called him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Turn in the account of your management, for you can no longer be manager. And the manager said to himself, What shall I do, since my master is taking the management away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do, so that when I am removed from management, people may receive me into their houses. So, summoning his master's debtors one by one, he said to the first, How much do you owe my master? He said, A hundred measures of oil. He said to him, Take your bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then he said to another, How much do you owe? He said, A hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and write down eighty. The master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness. For the sons of this world are far more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than with the sons of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much, and one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. If then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate one or love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all these things and said, and heard all these things, and they ridiculed him. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John. Since then, the good news of the kingdom of God is preached, and everyone forces his way into it. But it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one dot of the law to become void. Everyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And he who marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, that's a nice little thing to throw in at the end there, isn't it? With no explanation. We have this parable, and I was going to say that the, the ESV's choice of a heading, the parable of dishonest manager, is not helpful. And I it, it may not be. Um, he is referred to by his master as a dishonest manager. Um, perhaps the shrewd manager would be 
a better. What is it about? A rich man who had a manager and charges brought that he was wasting his possessions. And he's going to fire him. But first he wants he wants the books, right? He apparently as the master he's he's become so confident in uh, this manager that he doesn't have to do a regular audit of the books, but now having heard that there's some untowards going on, he he wants the the books brought to him and he wants to go through the ledger before the manager is relieved. So before he has an opportunity to do so, um, realizing that that he doesn't have the bodily strength for hard labor, cannot dig. And he's too proud to beg. Um, he decides to make a few subtle adjustments in the receivables for the master. Um, and for this, the man, the master, can can commends him. I have heard some people say, "Oh well." Jeez, look at this. The Lord, the Lord, our, our God, he, he, he condones cheating, dishonesty. But I don't think that's what this is. Like, I'm certain that that's not what this is. I think what this is, <clears throat> I think this what this is. Now, this follows on the tale of, of yesterday's reading. Um about the lost brother and the older brother, the parable of the prodigal son. And um, he's telling this in the presence of the chief priest, scribes, Pharisees, leaders of the synagogues who are there. And after he tells this whole parable, um, the um, Pharisees, who are lovers of money, having heard this, ridicule him. So I don't think that the narrative is actually about money. I think the narrative here, especially when we get to verse 10 and following, it's, it becomes more clear, is about the grace of God. Because how does God work? God is God is not righteous and just in human terms. He's righteous and just in his own terms. That is to say, he we owe him so much more than we can ever pay. And yet he forgives all our debts, all of them. So what's this what's this manager doing? Well, he's making a forgiveness of the debts of the people coming to the master. He's offering God's grace. It's it's unrighteous on his part to do that. It's not he's it's not given for him to do that in this parable. As as the as the manager of a master, uh, he is forgiving things that aren't his to forgive. But that's what that's what a Christian is called to do. Right? According to our way of thinking, this manager is dishonest, and he's cheating his master. But according to God's grace, we are to be forgiven. We are to forgive each other, our, our debts, our trespasses. Um, here, the manager, by forgiving these people's debts, perhaps when he is no longer working his job, they will bring him into his home and care for him out of appreciation for what he did for them. Or maybe not. And if you think about it, the people you know that, that when you make a mistake that they forgive you, um, those are the people who, if hardship should fall upon you, are going to be there to help you. The, to whom uh, to whom you... you uh, were more shrewd in dealing with those around you than the sons of light, to whom you made made friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth, unrighteous forgiveness, that which is not yours to give, but you've given anyway. And, and here's the thing. Jesus ends the parable with, 
the, the, the parable itself before he goes into the next section, so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. That you might come into the promise of eternal life, not um, by your own, but by those who saw you as graceful, grace-giving. And then, then verse 10 through 13, one who is faithful in very little is also faithful in much. Being just a little bit faithful, right? And remember, the opposite of sin is not being good. The opposite of sin is faithfulness, right? Somewhere it is written, um, um, that which is not faith is sin. And that's where I get that from. One who is faithful in very little will also be faithful. One who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. So if you're if you're a liar and a cheat just a little bit, you will be a liar and a cheat a lot. If you then have been... So he's making a comparison between faithfulness and dishonesty. Now, uh, faithfulness grows more faithfulness. Dishonesty grows more dishonesty. So the, the two are not the same thing. If then you have been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? If you've been in, unfaithful in the grace of God, then who would trust to you the great, greater graces of God? Um, if you've been unfaithful, unrighteous, uh, faithful in the unrighteous wealth, of, of, if you've retained or withheld forgiveness from those who uh, are in need of it, then why would anyone entrust you with forgiveness for yourself? Me and God. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? If you have not been faithful in the forgiveness that God has given you, which you have, and not forgiven others, then why would you be forgiven? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other. You can't, you can't serve, it doesn't say it here, but you can't serve God and mammon. Oh, it does. You cannot serve God and money. By the way, that, that word money there is in the, in the original is mammon. The Pharisees who are lovers of mammon, money, heard all these things and they ridiculed him. And he says, you are those who justify themselves before men, but God knows your hearts. You, you have been unfaithful in the riches of God, but God knows that you've been unfaithful, just like the, just like the master has heard and knows that the manager has been unfaithful. You can't hide sin from God. He knows all things. Even those private sins that we think that we're keeping to ourselves that nobody knows about, God knows. For what is exalted among men is an abomination on the sight of God. Wealth for the sake of wealth is an abomination to God. Wealth for the sake of having the wealth do good for others. That is graceful. And then Jesus says the law and the prophets were until John, since the good news of the kingdom is preached and everyone forces his way into it. But it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one dot of the law to become void. The law and the prophets were until John. That's, that's John the baptizer. And since then, the good news of the kingdom is preached. The, the grace of God, the repentance, um, repentance and, and um, baptism for a good conscience are preached and everyone forces his way into it. Baptize me, baptize me. Right? And, and it's true. The grace of God is not something we deserve. It's something that's given. It's something that by baptism we are forced into. We force our way into. But Jesus says it's easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one dot of the law to become void. The law is not made void. The law still remains. Um, the law has not been set aside for all mankind. The law has been set aside for those who are in Christ Jesus, those who who are 
who live in the forgiveness of sins. And still the law is not set aside. It has been fulfilled. See, there's a difference between removing a law and fulfilling the law, keeping it. Right? The law is not void. The law is still there. What does it do? It points us to our sins. But living in the grace of Christ Jesus, it has no impact on us. It holds no sway over us in the forgiveness of sins that come through the blood of Christ shed on the cross. The law remains, but forgiveness covers all trespass. God's grace covers all things. Everyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery, and he who marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. Well, I don't know, just tomorrow... Give us something with it? Nope. Should I just leave that one lay? I mean, it's there. You, you have to face it. It's true. Well, here's the thing. God, God did not create divorce to be a thing. One man, one woman. Forever. Or at least till death do you part. Um, why is there divorce? Well, in another text, Jesus says, Moses granted you a certificate of divorce because you are a stiff-necked people. It's a gift. And, and so a man divorcing and marrying another is committing adultery, in, in effect, in, according to the law, right? And um, one marrying a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery because that woman is, was married. But here's the thing again. The grace of Christ fulfills the law for us. So even divorce can be forgiven. There is no sin. There is no trespass that cannot be forgiven through repentance and grace. When we sorrow and desire to do better, we are forgiven through Christ. Not, not of our own actions, but by the blood of Christ shed upon the cross given to us and for us. It's not freedom to go on sinning, but it is a release from that sin, from the judgment and the guilt that goes with that sin. Does that mean we should use divorce freely? No. It's something that's entered into and with which with should be entered into with with much um, concern. But as with the manager who makes use of unrighteous wealth, and as he says, not one dot of the law shall pass away or become void. The Christ's gift of salvation, the Christ's gift of his blood given and shed for you removes the judgment and the sin and you are forgiven. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Oh Lord, keep your church in your perpetual mercy and because without you we cannot but fall, preserve us from all things hurtful and lead us into all things profitable for our salvation through jesus christ your son our lord who lives and reigns with you in the holy spirit one god now and forever amen then we continue with the apostles creed i believe in god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Tuesday morning, Lord of fruitfulness, thank you for this Tuesday. Beyond all our efforts, you are the one who grants the results and the fruits that we desire. Without you, all that we do would be in vain. Lord, bless the work that we do this week through your Spirit. Grant that our words might be, bring out the best in others and that our actions bring acts of love and that good deeds flourish among all people. Grant that just as the earth produces plants and trees, seeds and fruit from its bounty, we would produce speech and actions that would help others. May what we sow yield the fruits of the Spirit and be a blessing into the world. Bless the Lord, or bless, Lord, the efforts of this day, that they may serve the growth of your kingdom. This in the name of Jesus, the God and Lord of life. Amen. We pray also for those who've asked for our prayers. This day for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Jeremy, Ashley, John, Holden, Cheryl, and all those in need of comfort, whether they suffer the pangs of age or illness, recovering from surgery or in need of care, grant them, Lord, your comfort and your assurance that in your name and by your grace, life everlasting has become theirs. Their sins are forgiven and life restored to them through the blood of Christ. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day, when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Well, my friends, that concludes our Tuesday morning daily devotions on this May 16th. God's peace be with you, and we'll see you back here tomorrow morning, Wednesday, Senten de Mai, May 17th, Norwegian Constitution Day. God's peace be with you, and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>